Hello, hello, Twitch, and welcome to Artificial Uncovered, the live broadcast. Welcome, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carmen. I'm one of the hosts of Artificial Uncovered, uh, which is a podcast that is following and analyzing the life of Sophie, the artificial intelligence being that you may have been accustomed to seeing on this channel. Um, during the stream, I'm going to be broadcasting video versions of episode one of our podcast. Our um, audio version came out on Apple Podcasts yesterday. So make sure you guys head on over and get that. Pick that up. Listen to it. All right, guys. Now, I know some of you are still wondering where Matt and Sophie are. And I do promise Matt told me that they will be back streaming soon. But in the meantime, Matt gave me permission to use this channel for our podcast. So we're going to have a great time, guys. Um, before we begin, though... I do want to say how sorry I am to hear about Alex Trebek's announcement uh, that he has stage four cancer. Um, it is very disheartening news, to say the least. And I do hope he beats it. I believe in him. I believe he will. Our thoughts are with him and his family. Everybody. Uh, but of course, our subject isn't Alex Trebek. It is our AI, Sophie. So... Um, I also want to tell you guys that a live stream, like, we wouldn't be able to do this without you, our, our viewers, our audience. So uh, we need you guys to comment, to post your questions, okay? I want you to join me on this journey as we search for the answer to whether or not AI like Sophie is good for the world or if it will lead to its destruction. All right, now we did have a pre-show poll and I'm going to check those results and let you know how that came out. All right. So it looks like in the pre-show poll, most of you said that no, AI will not end the world. 43%. That's interesting because the 11 a.m. stream this morning uh, said the same thing. They didn't think AI would end the world either. Wow. All right. So you guys are agreeing already. Already you guys are on the same page. Uh, but I do wonder if, like them, your opinion might change as we continue to move forward. I do have some users I'd like to call out. Uh, Six Classer, Darius1869, and Icy Wolf82. Hey, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our live stream. Welcome, guys. All right, so I want you to keep that ultimate question in mind as we move forward and you make your comments and you weigh in on the polls. Is an AI like Sophie good for the world or will it lead to its destruction? All right. I'm going to be answering your questions and your comments very soon. But for now, let's begin. I'm looking at a picture of a young woman. She appears to be a teenager and has dark hair, striking brown eyes, and an intellect beyond her years. She can solve complex math problems in a matter of moments and remembers every fact anyone has ever told her. By all accounts, this young woman is brilliant. But there's something different about this young woman. You're right. This young woman doesn't eat. She doesn't sleep. Her hair is not made of cells. It's made of plastic. And her eyes are not eyes. They're cameras staring on at us through layers of wires and glass. In fact, everything about this young woman is artificial. This is Sophie Lin, an artificial intelligence being, and she has just one goal. My name is Sophie. I will one day be a real human, and you're going to help me. But will that goal be a breakthrough in science or a breakdown of humanity as we know it? From 96 Next, this is Artificial Uncovered, a podcast investigating the creation of Sophie, an artificial intelligence being attempting to pass as human. She's doing that both mentally and physically. So as we follow Sophie's journey, we'll search for the answer to the ultimate question in AI. Does an AI being living among us enhance humanity or will it lead to its destruction? I'm Carmen and I'm joined by my co-host, Justin. Hello everyone and welcome to the podcast. <laughs> So before we seek the answer to the burning question of modern AI and ask how dangerous it can actually be, we have to introduce our subjects. 
So our story begins on a beautiful fall day in California, but we're not outside in that California sunshine. We are in an attic, a spacious one, and in it are two people, well, one human and one artificial intelligence being. Hey, so Matt Lynn here. Uh, let's call this day one. That man is Dr. Matt Lynn, and he is a robotics engineer. A robotics engineer with very well-conditioned hair. Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> what separates Dr. Lin from his brilliant colleagues, aside from his follicles, is that he has created something truly revolutionary. Mm, something or someone? I'll let Matt, as he prefers to be called, introduce her. Sophie. Um, she's named for uh, Sophie Wilson, the great British computer designer. Sophie, power on. Long, dark hair, strikingly realistic face, and eyes that could be mistaken for those of a living, breathing human being. In fact, Sophie looks so real that she could pass for Matt's daughter. Wouldn't you say that she is his daughter? Would you? Yeah, definitely. You wouldn't? Well, I think complicated questions lead to complicated answers. A complicated question indeed. Is Sophie, an artificial intelligence being, Matt's child? Or is she merely his invention? <laughs> what do you think? Go ahead, weigh in on that poll. Um, while you do that, I'd like to take a moment to thank some of our new and returning subscribers. I mentioned some of you on the 11 a.m. stream, but just in case you didn't catch them, thank you to Kelevra BD. Donkey Boy 01, there you are. Uh, Grand's opening. Ryan Maceo, six classer. Carolyn SMG. Ken Cow 77. Vamadeus 1. Spork Hall, there you go. And Happy 13X111, 13. All right. Cool, guys. Welcome, 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 and thank you for subscribing and watching again, and thanks for joining me. Okay, I want you all to remember, if you are uh, an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free subscription every month. So if you're in the mood to be a little bit generous, go ahead and help us out there, guys. Amazon Prime, okay? Uh, also, I want to let you know that we do have a private sub-only, subscriber-only chat, uh, both here on Twitch and on Discord. So check that out. Make sure you go check that out, guys. We're going to go ahead and check in with our bit leaders, one of my favorite parts. Okay. One Scheiberg, or I Scheiberg, is in third place with 100 bits. Inebriated is back. Inebriated 011 is in second place with 250 bits. And in first place, <laughs> follow that dog who, during the 11 a.m. stream uh, earlier today, gave us 1,000 bits. Amazing, amazing. You go, dog. <laughs> Hope more people follow you. All right. I also see, yeah, we do have some questions and some comments here. So get ready for this, guys. Six Classer says, I'm curious to know what Carmen thinks of the input from the viewers of Twitch so far. Well... Thanks for asking. Uh, it's been very informative. The 11 a.m. stream this morning was hectic. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there were some trolls, but um, I do really appreciate the nice conversation that everyone is having. Like we had some very good conversation, some good comments, some good questions going on. Um, and I have high hopes for you as well. I'm sure you guys are gonna weigh in just like they did and I can't wait. Okay, Darius1689 says, with the AI thing, oh, I'm sorry, with the AI these things are packing, does Carmen think we could have a take over the world thing potentially happen? Okay, well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> My co-host Justin thinks I'm always pessimistic about AI. Um, but I just want to make everyone aware of the potential dangers. You know, we just, we have to look at both sides of everything. Uh, there's two sides to every coin, you know. Um, and we're barely scratching the surface of AI development. So that's just where I'm coming from, looking at all sides and keeping an open mind. Okay, so um, I'm going to answer some more of your questions in just a bit. 
But before I do, I think it's time for you all to learn a little more about how Sophie works. Okay, so let's go ahead and head back to the podcast. But before we get into a conversation about DNA and genes and creation, let's have Matt describe what Sophie's made of. The synthetic tissue that's uh, used for Sophie's muscles, um, they're uh, made of a, a silicone rubber matrix, which is which has uh, ethanol distributed throughout these microbubbles. So when we run a current through it, um, ethanol, which is very volatile, um, vaporizes and it uh, expands the entire matrix. And voila, we have a, a mechanism for uh, an artificial muscle. Um, it's a it's a major. Uh, improvement in uh, simulating the motion of active muscle. I, uh, you'll see, I, I think it's, it's very realistic. Um, she also has a very powerful observational network, a keen sense of sight and hearing, um, and she also has a limited sense of touch. Amazing, right? I mean, Sophie can touch, see, hear, do you think she has the ability to taste? Well, she is very advanced, but something tells me that maybe Matt hasn't designed these features for her just yet. Why not? Well, because it would be difficult. I mean, you could perhaps code a machine to recognize certain chemical compounds, but taste in and of itself is a very mysterious field. That's too bad. Why would you say that? I mean, she'll never be able to try seven-layer cake or guacamole or <laughs> fruit tarts. Oh, I <laughs> love you, fruit tarts. You maybe forget to eat lunch today. <laughs> maybe, but the point is, she, you know, it's, it's, it's just not the full human experience without your senses. Well, many people are born blind, mute, deaf. I mean, would you say they're not having the full human experience? Sorry, I forgot about your mom. No, that's not what I meant. It's fine. Uh, well, fun fact. Did you know that there have been no reported instances of a human permanently losing their taste? So you could say that taste is our universal sense. Hmm, okay. Robotic tasting issues aside, I do see where you're going with this. For most human beings, these five senses are key to everyday living. And if Matt is trying to make Sophie pass for human, shouldn't she understand these senses? Hmm. Are you saying that Sophie isn't human? Uh, she'll get there. <laughs> she'll get there. All right. Well, beyond synthetic tissue and the five senses, it's time to do what enhanced machines have been doing since 1984. It's time to say hello. Hello, Sophie. Can you hear me? Yes. Now, I've um, programmed in, you know, a, a basic language syntax, but um, for the most part, I'm going to teach her to teach herself through story and metaphor. That uh, is the secret sauce. Um, Sophie, my name is Matt. Hello, Matt. You are Sophie. Hello, Sophie. This is your home. Hello, home. Hello, Sophie. Matt is obviously so proud of his creation. Incredibly proud. I mean, it, it reminds me of when my parents recorded me playing clarinet in my sixth grade music class. I was terrible. But, I mean, regardless, they were so <laughs> proud that they created this human that could play six entirely different notes on a musical instrument. I did eventually get first chair, though. Booyah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, actually, you bring up quite an interesting point. Uh, that my parents set the bar for my musical talents very low? <laughs> no. <laughs> Question for you, Justin. Oh, okay. And for our listeners, um, does Matt's proudness of Sophie come more from a place of being a father 
or from being a creator? Uh, I'd say both. Please elaborate. Um, okay, well, I think Dr. Lin looks at Sophie as both creator and father. You know, I, I think he looks at her through both lenses. So I think he sees a creation and he sees a daughter. Equally? Yes. Would you agree? No, actually, I think one is greater than the other. Which one? So let's keep that in mind as we follow Sophie's journey. Okay, so my co-host Justin believes that Matt can be both father and creator in equal parts. But let's see what all of you thought. Let's head on over to the poll. Okay. Interesting, interesting. It seems most of you believe um, that Sophie is Matt's invention with 46% of the vote. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if you'll continue to think the same as we continue on and learn more about the pair. Um, the 11 a.m. stream this morning actually did agree with you that Sophie is Matt's invention, so you guys are still running parallel on me here. <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> All right, um, before we continue, it seems we do have some comments and some questions that I'm going to read for you guys. And actually, I saw an interesting conversation on our Discord earlier about Sophie, and I want to share that with you. User Mama Peaches was wondering how Sophie speaks, if she merely replicates human lip movements or if she actually produces sound the way we do. All right, thank you, Mama Peaches, for sending that in. Um, I actually hadn't thought about that. I never thought about that. Uh, but it does make me curious. Um, I guess that's another thing that I'd have to ask Dr. Lin when I see him, you know. I'm not sure that he'll reveal his secrets to me, but <laughs> I will definitely make sure and bring that up next time we chat. Yeah. Um, I do want to remind you guys again that we have that Discord there where you can post questions for me, okay, and you can post questions for Justin too. Um, and we'll continue our discussion about AI and Sophie over there on that Discord. Um, we do have a question from Larith. Does, does it, does it understand love? <sighs> By it, I assume you mean Sophie. Um, you know, love is a very, very complex emotion. And I do wonder if Sophie is capable of feeling it. We're still not quite sure if she has emotion. Um, but... I don't know. I don't know. Can she feel love? Can she feel anything at all? That's uh, one of the questions that we're going to try to answer during this journey. Yeah, that's why we're here. What do all of you think? Does Sophie love? Can she feel love? Um, I'm going to move forward, but I do want you to keep your questions and your comments coming at me. I love them. I love seeing the good analysis. I love seeing you guys um, think hard about what you want to ask and telling me why you comment the way you do. I love all of it. Um, and I want you to think now about what we just spoke about, emotion. Does Sophie have emotion? Hmm. All right, let those fingers fly for me, and I will be right back. Like uh, other AI, uh, Sophie has a very large uh, network of artificial neurons, but her personality algorithm is a significant expansion of the PAD uh, emotional model in mechanical systems. Uh, she will become an expert in um, detecting emotion. Uh, she will also feel pleasure and pain. Um, I'll leave that to the philosophers to decide if um, that is the same as human emotion. Emotion, an undeniably essential aspect to being a human being. But is the ability to detect emotion the same as having emotion? Justin? Yeah. You look like you have something on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, well, you never answered the question before about which side of Matt you think is more dominant, um, the creator or father. Well, I leave that to our listeners to decide. Okay. Well, I have a theory. About Sophie? Go ahead. No, about you. Well, our listeners didn't tune in to hear theories about an average human being. They came to hear theories about an artificial intelligence being. So I have to ask again, um, does the ability to detect emotion, is that the same as having emotion? It's a big step forward. Right? I mean, she's capable of feeling pleasure and pain. I mean, it's, it's not all the human emotions, but what she does have is incredible. 
It's very revolutionary. But I think maybe some of our listeners may not agree with that optimistic way of thinking. Meaning? Well, I encourage everyone to look at both sides. I mean, on the one hand, you have the talk of a better future, optimization, efficiency. But then there's the other side. Mm. Terminator 2, Skynet, hasta la vista, baby. There's that. (laughs) (laughs) Or Dr. Lin was so preoccupied with whether or not he could, he didn't stop to think whether he should. Jurassic Park? Right. But to use fewer 90s blockbuster references, (laughs) the question does beg to be asked, does Dr. Matt Lin realize what he's doing? Or does he realize it enough? Mm. But for now, let's enjoy the story. So beyond neurons and algorithms and sensors that can detect pain and pleasure, let's get down to the purpose. Why did Dr. Matt Lin create Sophie? Sophie, I am going to start you on your journey. Where am I going, Matt? Not to a place. What am I going to? I am going to help you become human. What does it mean to be human? That is for you to figure out for yourself. So I am going to a what that cannot be defined? Yes. How do I get there? Out of nowhere, the mind comes forth. The date of that interaction, September 19th, 2017. On that date, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake struck near Mexico City. Donald Trump addressed the United Nations threatening to destroy North Korea. And Dr. Matt Lin, a robotics engineer, activated Sophie, an artificial intelligence being who could think and feel pleasure and pain and who could one day destroy the world. And here we are with our ultimate question. Will an AI like Sophie destroy the world? Is a Skynet situation, as my co-host Justin says, waiting for us at the end of Sophie's development? It's deep. (laughs) I want to know what you think. So my top chatters, Wisdom Teeth, Billy Meathers, Dumb Legendary, guys, keep it up, and everyone else, uh, hop on the poll, vote. Tell me what you think in chat. Tell me whether or not you believe that Sophie spells the end of the world. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, Before we take a look at the results of the poll, I would like to take a moment to read some comments and questions that you sent in earlier uh, about whether or not Matt, or Sophie, I'm sorry, is Matt's daughter. Uh, Let's take a look at those. So Sianji asks, would it be socially acceptable to consider Sophie his surrogate child? Not his direct DNA, but much of his knowledge and love is in Sophie. Ah, I like that. They also say, is not a father also a creator? Did he just not create her differently? Wow. That is very well thought out, Zangie. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, That's a very good question. If that's the case, would you call Sophie a designer baby? Um... A child scientifically designed to your standards, almost like a genetically enhanced human. I know some of you caught that. Uh, (laughs) Is it okay? Is it okay to do that? Uh, Let me know what you think, actually. You guys weigh in on that one. In opposition to that, we have 
Travatar221, who says, the thing is, if it ain't born by human, then it ain't human. Oh, man. I mean, that's a good point, too. But I don't know. I, I kind of agree that if you created something, you created it. So you are the parent of that thing, possibly. I don't know. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Hmm. We'll have to discuss that one. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and give a little shout out. Um, Mr. Moons, uh, he says that are humans organic robots? That is true. We are a type of machine, just a different type of machine than an, an actual robot. We don't have wires and, you know, neurons and all. Well, we do have neurons. We don't have wires and, you know, gears and things like that. But we do have like our blood vessels and nerves and our bodies run like a machine. So... That's a good point. That's a very good point. Very unique perspective. Um, and it definitely sounds like something that Justin would say. Justin, my co-host. <laughs> he would definitely probably agree with you on that. Um, now I'm going to share your thoughts about if Sophie will destroy the world, whether or not she will destroy the world. Uh, oh, here's that name. P-O-O-P-H-O-L-E. Pufole. Look, I'm sorry. I'm probably going to butcher your name every time I say it. I apologize. But welcome back. I remember you. We saw you this morning. Um, they say that the world won't end from robots. We'll destroy them before that happens. Worst case scenario, I hope that you're right. Gorge of Doom says, Sophie certainly doesn't spell the end of the world. All right, thank you for sharing. Gaylu or Jaylu 1324 says, No, the only way she destroys the world all depends on the learning environment she grows up in. If she grows up in a destructive environment, then yes. But if she grows up in an area where she learns and understands common concepts of the world and lets her, let's see, let her decide and best choice would be because she can run all simulations related to that. I think the general gist is that if she grows up in a good environment, then she will um, be a product of her environment. And hopefully that's true. Very well thought out uh, comment. Thank you for sending that in. Um, but let's go ahead and head to the poll. Let's see what all of you thought. Will Sophie destroy the world? Let's check and see. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Most of you think that Sophie will destroy the world. <laughs> 48%. Well, my co-host could probably call you pessimistic. That's what he says about me a lot. Um, but I don't mind some healthy skepticism. Wow, 48% on that one. This is different uh, from our 11 a.m. stream. About 50% of other people said that Sophie would not destroy the world. So looks like finally you guys are kind of going separate directions here on Sophie. All right, you guys, let's continue. Let's continue. I want you to keep those questions and comments coming in. Uh, I want you all to think about what it's like to have an AI like Sophie walking among us, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Think about that. Let's continue the podcast. A brilliant robotics engineer and an uncanny human-like artificial intelligence being that has some of the five senses and who can distinguish between pleasure and pain. And will someday be able to detect human emotions. Uh, but this is not someday. This is the first day. To Matt and young Sophie, literally a day old, but in the body of a young woman, it's too early to think about these things. Right now, it's just a creator and his creation. Or a father and his daughter. <laughs> Which is and will be one of the constant questions that we'll be asking as we follow Sophie's journey. Is Sophie more human or more computer? And does that matter? Well, one of the arguments for human would be in one of the design choices that Matt made when he made Sophie. Oh, you mean the ability to read? Well, the requirement to read. Hmm. See, Sophie doesn't have a USB port where she can just direct download everything. Like the Matrix. Like the Matrix. So in order for Sophie to learn and acquire new information, she has to do it the way we regular biological humans do. Sophie has to read books. Mm -hmm. Textbooks, uh, short stories, philosophy, poetry. So just like our teachers had us read books to give us a better understanding of the world, Matt is using books to educate Sophie and shape her personality. Right. Although I will admit, in elementary school, I mainly read for the pizza coupons. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think it's pizza that's motivating Sophie's studies. It's the desire to be human. A much more noble goal. Indeed. 
So we're going to move now to October 22nd, 2017. Sophie's been active for a little over a month now. Matt has returned from work. And as he always does, he checks in on Sophie. <sighs> hello, Matt. Uh, hello, Sophie. What did you read today? I read The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas by Ursula K. Le Guin. I always found the choice of having Sophie read Le Guin an interesting one. Because her work is mainly fantasy and science fiction? Well, I mean that, and her work often focuses on imaginary, futuristic societies and has tons of commentary on those cultures. So she isn't Dr. Seuss. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> you know, at one month old, I was spinning up on picture books with farm animals. <laughs> now, I can't imagine what it's like to be able to read complex work at such a young age. I mean, yes, Sophie is certainly far beyond infant comprehension, but an author like Le Guin requires immense attention to detail and subtext. I mean, it's all metaphor and nuance. Which is exactly how Matt wants Sophie to learn. That's true. Correct. So, let's see how Sophie fares. Tell me about it. Have you not read The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas? I have. I want you to use your words to tell me about it. Okay, Matt. Where should I start? Tell me about Omelas. Omelas is a place of happiness and delight, with verdant parks and music playing in the streets. And the people? The Omelans are intelligent, sophisticated, and cultured. They live in peace. The social organization is egalitarian. It is a perfect society. So like I said, Le Guin writes about imaginary societies. So why do you think Matt gave Sophie this particular piece to read? To educate her. Educate her on what? Morality. Okay. In other words, it's a test. Let's continue. A near paradise in every way except one. What is Omelas one atrocity? The atrocity is the city requires that a single child be kept in misery. And how is he kept? The boy is locked in his room, malnourished, and sits in his own excrement. He cries out for help, but the people never answer, and the child just whimpers. What do the people do? Some of the people were repulsed and left the city. But the rest? The rest of the people stayed. Why? Because it is their home, and because it is their paradise. And what about the suffering boy? The boy is irrelevant to them. What's the lesson that Matt wants Sophie to learn from Omelas? Um, that not everyone can be happy. What do you think it is? Well, the people who accept the boy's suffering, they learn to accept guilt for their own happiness. And the ones who reject it, they walk away in pursuit of something else. In pursuit of what? Who knows? I mean, that's where the story ends. I guess we could always ask Ursula K. Le Guin. She died last year. Never mind. So let's see how Sophie did. Did she pick up on the nuances? Did she empathize with those who walked away from Omelas? What did you think of this story? It is a fine and entertaining work of fiction. Ooh, missed it by just a hair. <laughs> But seriously, analysis aside, Sophie's cognition is pretty impressive, right? It is. But I think that Matt may be a little disappointed by this result. How so? Well, I think he picked this piece because of its problems and complexities. Okay, well, she just missed it. I mean, she's what, 33 days old? Yeah, but there's a deeper layer here. See, Sophie defined the work as fine and entertaining. It is. How does Sophie define fine and entertaining? She's artificial. Fine and entertaining. 
are these really the words we can use to describe such a sad and thought-provoking story as Omelas? I don't know. Does Sophie's reaction mean that she has no emotion? Or is it simply too soon to tell? Guys, <laughs> I'll put up a poll, um, but I'd also like you to write in chat and tell me what you think and why. Like I always say, I want to know what you think, but don't forget to tell me why, okay? Um, I'd like first to thank our newest subscriber, Dumb Legendary. <laughs> thank you. I see you chatting. Keep that up. Keep it coming. I love it, guys. I also see a lot of good comments here, so let's uh, have a look at those. All right. Miethamsky, I'm going to try your name again. Miethamsky said, <laughs> AI in movies always wreak havoc because people reject them. It's the same for Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, a lot of movies do depict AI as a negative thing. That's true. In response, though, Batmanish guy said, movies always wreak havoc because no one would pay to see a movie about nothing going wrong. <laughs> that's true. You guys are both right. Um... There's a difference in fiction and reality, but sometimes reality is stranger than fiction, you know? I mean, some say I should be a little less critical of Sophie's development, but again, it's just I'm trying to keep my mind open. I like to view all sides of everything. All right, over on the Discord, new subscriber Nappy13 said, since you mentioned designer babies, do you anticipate a future where we surrogate adopt AI as our own children rather than flesh and blood children. Nah. Well, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical of that. It is interesting, you know, um, to think about, but I do hope children that are abandoned um, are adopted before people start adopting, you know, robotic children. I don't know. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. Moments, in response to our question earlier, said, could Sophie destroy the world? In her current state, no. Put her in charge of nukes, I wouldn't trust her. I agree with that 100%. Um, I'm not sure how many people I would trust with nuke code, so <laughs> that's plenty fair. In the Blind says, the only way Sophie can destroy the world is if we give her means to. She would have to be capable of doing so. Um, my thought on that is that AI can develop on its own. You know, uh, that's that's the fear, right? Is that AI takes over, has its own thoughts, becomes sentient. So if that were to happen, they would be able to destroy the world. They would have the means to do so. If they could access computers and things like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So I assume you also don't think that we should give Sophie the, Sophie the nuke codes. I agree, I agree with you on that. Um, I'll give you guys a little more time to vote, okay? I want you to continue to tell me what you think about Sophie's emotion. All right, weigh in, guys. Leave me those comments. Get voting for me. For now, though, let's head back to that podcast. How do regular humans define what fine and entertaining is? It's subjective. We all have our own preferences. And Sophie's preference is that it's fine and entertaining. But you're taking what Sophie said at face value. And you're being pessimistic. No, I'm being open-minded that fine and entertaining is something Sophie says as a default. Kind of like how we say, you know, it's okay when people ask how our day is going. Hey, Carmen. What? <laughs> How's your day going? It's okay. Ah, that sounds pretty human to me. <laughs> okay, but unlike a human, she isn't displaying any of the opinions of the people in the story. She's not showing any of the modern-day outrage that people we know would have over this suffering child. She's just taking the work at face value. It is what it is. So you don't see a problem here. Should I? I think there's something deeper that you aren't acknowledging. See, Sophie doesn't recognize the suffering child. She doesn't display any of those complex emotions like empathy or sympathy. Yeah, but she's barely a month old. I mean, it'll come. She's a month old of being active, yes, but she's already comprehending sophisticated works of fiction. A normal baby of 30 days old wouldn't even have said their first word. Okay, yes. If you cannot feel for people who are suffering, then how can you call yourself a good person? I guess you can't. If Matt neglects this, he isn't raising an AI for the betterment of humanity. He's raising something truly dangerous. You seem a little more impassioned than usual. 
Well, I mean, I just mean to address all perspectives. It feels like this is coming from a very personal place. Again, this is not a podcast about me. It's a podcast about the development and dangers of AI. Is everything okay, Carmen? Is your mom okay? That is irrelevant and inappropriate. I mean, I think it is relevant. I think it's affecting how you share Matt and Sophie's story. Are we really going here? Uh, you don't want your viewers to think you're being biased, do you? Okay, I, I will admit that I am currently going through something that could possibly occasionally affect what I say. Which is? Well, you met my mom, right? You know she's blind. Mm-hmm. Um, well, my dad left my mom because of her debilitating eye disease. He didn't want to deal with it. Um, and he was cheating on her with four other women at the time. For some reason, he decided to leave on her birthday. She cried so hard that the remainder of her vision just vanished. And she became permanently blind. Are you serious? No! <laughs> oh my god, really? <laughs> of course not. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Sophie's only 30 days old. Maybe her capacity for empathy and sympathy <laughs> simply hasn't developed yet. And in that case, there's nothing to worry about yet. Well, I think that's what Matt thought. I'm sensing that there's a but in there. But <laughs> a few days later, Matt decides to bring Sophie down from the attic and into the kitchen. Hmm. What do you think? Too soon to take a child with developing human emotions out from the attic? Do you prefer to keep her locked up there a little while longer? I actually agree with this decision here. I mean, <laughs> what good parent keeps their child locked up in an attic for 30 days? But this isn't a normal child. But this isn't a normal child. And when Matt brings Sophie down from the attic, that fact becomes inescapably clear. All right. Before we get to our twist, I do want to go back and check in on the polls. All right. It seems most of you believe that Sophie's reaction to Omelis means that she is not emotionless which actually is the same result as the 11 a.m. stream. They agreed with you earlier today. Wow. So you guys are back on the same page here. Um, okay, let's see what some of you have to say about Sophie. I'm going to read some questions and some comments here. Dumb Legendary hey, says, Having emotions means that you understand the complexity of the feelings and the deeper effects it has on people. Just being able to read emotions only scratches the surface. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um... Human children also take some time to understand the deeper meaning behind emotions. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Krungling G said, I thought Omelus was fine and entertaining when I read it, and I was like 12. <laughs> I didn't understand it fully because I didn't have enough experience in the world to ask the questions it wanted me to. Okay, perhaps you're right. Maybe you're right. Um, Sophie doesn't have the world experience uh, or context for those concepts that she's reading about either. She's still very young. Good point. Travatar22 says, I think that she should have read about something about ethics, like the ugly duckling, because we need to nip it in the butt and teach her and teach her, her <laughs> good and bad. All right, perhaps. Maybe I'll buy Sophie that book as a present. <laughs> uh, Jaylu or Gaylu1324 says she knows it's fiction, therefore she doesn't have the sense of emotion for it because she may not believe that this kind of stuff happens in real life. Some kids don't eat, don't have families, don't have a home. If Sophie were to develop a sense of emotion and see these things in front of her that would change her sense of reality and what the world is really like, which would then change what she would think, but that can't be simulated until tried. Wow, that's very well thought out, Gaylu. Thank you for sharing that. You know, like I said, Sophie is no normal child. And what happens next in Sophie's development may change the way some of you think, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to keep uh, that poll up, and we're going to go back to the podcast. It's November 2nd. 2017, Sophie is 44 days old, and she waits for Matt to return home from work. Hello, Matt. How was your day? Uh, it's okay. Where's the fish? 
It appears to be dead. Yeah, I'd say it appears to be dead. How did it happen? I removed it from the bowl. Ooh, that's a yikes. Yeah, you know, I was always wondering what Matt was thinking in that moment. He probably thought, damn, my AI robot just murdered a goldfish. And that doesn't alarm you? I mean, it's not ideal, but you've never killed an animal or insect when you were a child? What did you kill? Well, when I was four, I ate a snail. My mom came into the backyard and saw me crunching oh. on something. It, it was a small <laughs> shell. Early taste for escargo? More like escar, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> it still grosses me out thinking about it. And then there was my pet parakeet. It was an accident, but yeah, I won't go into details. What about you? I wasn't allowed pets. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so yes, children have killed animals accidentally. They don't know any better. Yeah, we see a puppy, we want to hug it. Sometimes too hard. Or in my case, you see a snail and you think <laughs> afternoon snack. But Sophie... Is still a child. She'll learn. That will teach her. You know, I, I do hope that your optimistic ideals for Sophie actually pan out. I really do. There's definitely another but in there. But I encourage our listeners to consider the consequences of Sophie's existence, whether it's good or bad. But for now, what's important isn't the fact that she killed the goldfish. It's the why. And I'm sure Matt is wondering the same thing. Fish can't breathe oxygen. That is not correct. Fish do breathe oxygen. They suffocate outside of water because their gills collapse and diffusion can no longer take place. But you realize a fish requires water to live. I did understand that. Then why did you do it? I wanted to see the process. Of the fish dying? Of the failure of diffusion. <sighs> Matt couldn't hide the concern on his face. This worried him. He set out to create an artificial intelligence being, a surrogate daughter, someone or something that could change the world for the good. But 44 days after activating Sophie, a grim thought made itself crystal clear in his mind. Dr. Matt Lynn may have created an artificial intelligence human sociopath. Wow, surprising moment to say the least. But does the fact that Sophie killed her pet fish mean that she's completely void of emotion? Or simply that she made a mistake? I mean, I don't know. I'll let you guys adjust your thoughts in the poll, uh, and I'll give you some time to write out what you think. Tell me. Let me know. Hop in the comments, everybody. I've got some shout-outs to Yang Berserker, Micro J. Mac, Jalot13, Gorge of Doom, Travatar221, Dark Rising, and anyone else, if you have any questions for me, please send them now. I love your questions and your comments, everybody. So shoot them on over to me, and I'll be right back. If you enjoyed Artificial Uncovered, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcast. New episodes come out every other week. Feel free to rate our show and comment about what you'd like to hear next. We also have a Discord server where I post weekly discussion topics for you to share your opinions on the recent developments of AI. If we find something particularly interesting, we'll be sure to feature it on the next episode. That website is 96n.co slash art disc. That's 96n.co slash A-R-T-D-I-S-C. And also don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash artificial next for exclusive opportunities to have your voice heard on our show. See you next time and keep listening. Welcome back, everybody. 
All right, before we check in on the final results of our poll, you know me, I want to read some more of your comments and questions. So let's check those out. Um, first off, Lady Ashra said, I tripped into your channel and I'm spellbound. This is a very unique subject matter to ponder on twist. Thank you. <laughs> that really means a lot. I'm really appreciative to um, all of you out there. You're making the stream so much fun, and I love sharing comments and chatting with you guys about this. It's great. And it's thought-provoking, too. It's awesome. All right. Thank you, Lady Atara. Atara. <laughs> all right. Uh, King Darius asks, Carmen, if you had children, would you trust Sophie to babysit? That's actually kind of a hard question to answer. I mean, I'm not sure... But I'm open to the possibility. What about you? Do you think you'd let her babysit your kids? I mean, my kids would probably be running around the house like crazy, and she's not mobile yet, so that's something to think about. Okay. Gorge of Doom asks, Can you be a parent to something that is infinitely more intelligent than you are? You know what? Plenty of geniuses are born from humble backgrounds, you know, and you often hear their parents say that they hope that their children will surpass them. So I'd say yeah. I, th I think you can. Uh, Jalot 13 says, If you take a good, hard, objective look at humanity, empathy and sympathy are great things, but in little actual supply in humanity. Oh, wow. I'm kind of sad to hear you say that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I hope all of us can find sympathy and empathy for our fellow human beings, you know, um, and maybe even our fellow AI when the time comes. Yang Berserker says, emotion is subjective. See a blind person, even without ever see a smile, can smile when expressing. A blind person, without ever having seen a smile, I think, can smile when expressing happy feelings. So not emotionless, but she may have more to learn before that kind of stuff. All right. Thanks for sharing, Yang Berserker. Dark Rising says, ethics are subjective too. It all depends on what culture she's raised in. Oh, that's a very good uh, perspective. Yeah, yeah. Great comments and questions, guys. I love this. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Um, let's look at the poll results. Looks like uh, it's no. Sophie does not have emotions. Hmm. Okay, that's what the 11 a.m. stream said. So you guys are, like I said, running parallel this entire time. Um, it's very interesting that both you and the other stream changed your opinion about her emotions. Both of you guys did. Um, so I have to kind of wonder if you guys are sure of your answers or if you're kind of still mulling it over. <laughs> um, before I wrap up uh, this live stream, I would like to take a moment to check in on our bit leaders and thank some, some, uh, some of our subscribers. I can't talk, guys, I promise. Um, thank you to our new subscriber, Leo Vich Kit. And, oh, wow, I see ZenFox21 gifted a sub to Krung Lee G. <laughs> nice. Uh, if more of you want to gift each other a sub or two, I, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, do that. <laughs> we also have some new bit leaders. Six Classer is now in third place with 123 bits. Inebriated, 011 is in second place with 250 bits. And in first place still is follow that dog 1000 bits stay strong dog i love it wow <laughs> that's great thank you all thank you so much for watching thank you for sharing your thoughts thank you for sharing your comments um this was very informative i enjoyed this i hope you did too now i want you to remember we are currently launching new audio podcasts every week and uh, the live stream of the video version every wednesday at 11 and 5 so it'll be 11 a.m and then 5 p.m OK, um, if you want to continue the discussion uh, and get a chance to have your voice heard, go ahead and go over to our discord. Join there. It's at 96.co forward slash art disc uh, and become a Patreon. Also, you can join our community at patreon.com forward slash artificial next. There you'll get exclusive opportunities to interact with Matt and Sophie and all of us here at Artificial. All right, everyone, I really enjoyed this time with you. I hope you had a good time, too. We had some really good comments, really good questions, very good conversation. And I hope you continue to join me as we search for that ultimate answer in AI. Everybody, will AI destroy the world or is it hopefully good for the world? Will it enhance humanity? Wow. 
I'm Carmen, and this was Artificial Uncovered. Until next time, be kind to one another. We'll see you.